Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Welcome to Messy Church this morning. Put your hand up if you're here for the first time. Well, I'm expecting lots more hands than that. I don't think any of the adults have been here before. Put your hand up if you haven't been to Messy Church for the f- before. Well, let's give you a very warm welcome, everybody. Round of applause. Good to see you. If you've got children with you, you normally sit at the front. Please come and sit at the front this morning. That'll be really helpful, so I'm not on my own. Messy Church is five years old this weekend. Um, so I'll try that again. Messy Church is five years old this weekend. And uh, it's been a great uh, journey over the last five years. Some of you, if you don't know the history of Messy Church, uh, about five and a half years ago, I sent out... Uh, um, what's the word? Uh, sorry? An email asking families if we had a service, especially for them, what time of the day and what day of the week would work for them. I was expecting Sunday afternoon, maybe Saturday, maybe a Wednesday. 70% of those who responded said 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. And the note they say about research, you go where the research takes you. And so in September 2018, we started a monthly message church at 10 o'clock. Our numbers have gone pre-COVID for about 80 or 90 uh, children and, and parents to an average of about 40 to 50, I think, since lockdown ended. Uh, I normally lead twice uh, every other month. Uh, it's really good for me to get to know some of the children and families, and I hope, do the children enjoy getting to know me? Sorry, that wasn't a very good response. <laughs> do the children enjoy getting to know me? Yes, of course. And do we have fun in Messy Church? Do we? Some people think that Messy Church is all about craft. Craft's only about 25% of what we do. And uh, what we're going to do this morning is just do what we do in Messy Church. Uh, So at Messy Church, you have to put your silly hat on, like I do most Sundays, have a bit of fun, something for everybody but hopefully um, you'll get a taste of what we do. But of course, the first thing we do when we come to Messy Church is to pray. So what do we do when we pray? We Thank you. We put our hands together. Why do we put our hands together? So we're not fiddling with anything. And we normally close our eyes just so we can think about what's been said. And when we've done that, you just repeat the words that I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you are with us today. As we offer you our praise. Bless each one of us this morning. As we learn how you guide us. Through our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. At this point, I should say good morning to those of you who are watching. Uh, well, you're watching offline because it's not live streamed this morning, uh, but it will be up on the website. Uh, a little later. We couldn't really do craft and everything being live streamed this morning. Uh, So Richard will edit the best bits, take a few photographs, put them in the live stream or the recording and it'll be fabulous. So let's say thank you to Richard. Uh, Gotta be good. So we start every messy church with the same song and it's I know Jesus loves me. It's a bit of a fun song and um, it has actions. So it's, I know, get our thumb point to our head, I know Jesus, remember that reminds us that Jesus loves us by dying on the cross. I know Jesus loves me. We put our hand on our heart because that's where we love, is it? I know Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. And I, I, 
I can't remember the words now. <laughs> I know he loves little ones, so we do that, little ones, as much as he loves dads and mums, or however you want to do that. It's a bit of fun, but what this song reminds us is that God loves everybody. So if you want to get a, something to wave or something to bang, if anybody wants to come up here and do the actions with me, young or old, that would be really good. But I'm going to ask you to all stand. I'm going to ask you to all stand and join in the actions. Hello, sweetheart. Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. politically correct song. I may have to change the actions. Um, but you still do them actions anyway, wouldn't you, John? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So what we've been doing this year, over the years we've looked at lots of different topics. We've looked at some Old Testament, New Testament, something about Jesus, some of the big uh, stories in the Bible. But what we've been doing this year, we've been doing what we call a messy church alpha. And did you know there's no one else in the country who have had a messy church alpha? So there you go. That's the first if you're looking, watching online. So we've been looking at lots of different things. The Bible, Jesus, prayer, um, all different things. And this morning the question is, how does God guide us? Now for those of you who've been coming to messy church over the weeks and months this year, you should know the answer to this. You should really know the answer. How does God guide us? So, what I want you to do in your family unit or with the people who are next to you, think about one way that God guides us. And what we do, we ask you to come forward, young or old, and write on the um, whiteboard, whiteboard or dirty whiteboard, um, how you think God guides us. I'll give you a minute to talk amongst yourselves and then send out a volunteer to come out and write on the board how God guides us.
answers with his heart. He guides me by what's right and what's wrong. That's a good answer. God guides us when we pray. God gives us food. I know who put that up there. <laughs> Maybe he does. I'm not sure. There's a message in everything. Okay, what else is up there? He guides us to help others. That's a good answer. He guides us with hope and kindness. That's another one that's been put up there. Very good answers here. That's a good answer, Emma. He guides us by reading the Bible. I'm glad prayer in the Bible have came up because we've been looking at prayer and the Bible uh, over the last few months. Okay. Some good pictures going on there. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's uh, maybe Danny can tell me. Good answers. He guides us to do right things. So that's what you're going to put. Well done. Okay, nearly finished, I think. What's that going to write? <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. We can have it. Uh, oh, it's a good one. He guides us through His Holy Spirit. So that's one that we covered as well. I'm glad people are remembering. I wonder how many of the regular church members can remember my sermon from four weeks ago. No. See. <laughs> Rita says she can't remember what she had for breakfast. How about donut fruit? For half done coffee. Okay, we're nearly done. Okay, I think. Okay. Oh, that's a good answer. He gives us stars. That's a very good answer, isn't it? Remember the wise men who were following a star? Oh, you t That doesn't matter, it's a great answer. Okay, I think we're nearly done. Okay, he gives us life. So, lots of good answers there. And I wonder whether we'll cover some of them this morning or whether by the end of Messy Church, you might have a few more to write on. Do you want to write something, John? I thought you were... <laughs> okay, so we'll come back to some of those uh, things later. We're going to sing again. And this is the song we've sung once or twice in Messy Church. It's called Ask, Seek and Knock. And how does God guide us? Well, sometimes we need to ask Him, which is through prayer. Sometimes we need to seek Him, which is perhaps reading the Bible and looking for him. And uh, sometimes we have to knock. The Bible said if we knock on the door, Jesus will answer. So I've got some actions for the chorus, but I don't have any actions for the rest of it. So we'll just sing it and then just follow me when we get to the chorus. You'll know what that means. So have everybody standing up. If we can. And ask, seek, knock. It says to me, it tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S. 
came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J.S.U.S. Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know But our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, knock when you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. down on the floor. Go and sit next to mummy and daddy. I'll take your flag with you. Katie, do you want to go back to mummy and daddy? Do you want to go over there, please? Okay, matey. So, what we often do in Messy Church, we, uh, oh, no, don't. Just blow. <laughs> you can blow them out later. What we do in Messy Church, we always have a video that links in with the theme or the Bible story for the day. And so one of the ways that God communicated with people in the Old Testament was a man called Moses through what we know as the burning bush. Anybody not heard of the story of Moses and the burning bush? One or two of you, okay. Well, you're going to find all about it this morning. So this is taken from the Prince of Egypt, the fabulous cartoon story about Moses and uh, in Egypt and what have you. So, the burning bush. Here I am. Take the sandals from your feet. 
For the place on which you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What do you want with me? I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry. Stop it! Leave that man alone! So I have come down to deliver them out of slavery, and bring them to a good land. And so, unto Pharaoh, I shall send you. Me? Who am I to lead these people? They'll never believe me. They won't even listen. I shall teach you what to say. Let my people go! But I was their enemy. I was the prince of Egypt, the son of the man who slaughtered their children. You've... You've chosen the wrong messenger. How, how can I even speak to these people? Who made man's mouth? Who made the deaf, the mute, the seeing, or the blind? Did not I? Now go! Wasn't that an amazing story? What would you do if you were wandering in the desert at night and all of a sudden you heard somebody speaking and you were looking around to see who it was and it was a bush on fire? What would you do? Would you run? Put your hand up if you'd run away. I'd run away. Would you be scared? Would you panic? Would you be... Well, I don't, it's all of those things, scared, panic, run away. How many of you would say, here I am, God, I'm listening? Would you? Would you? Would you, Mummy, Daddy? <laughs> well, I believe you. I think you're the only person here. But, uh, oh, somebody else as well? Okay. Brother and sister have been well trained. I wouldn't, I'd be very scared because God hadn't spoken to people through a burning bush before. So people couldn't say, oh, he's done this before, he'll do it again. So that was the first time he ever spoke uh, to somebody uh, through a burning bush. So that's just one way that God guides people. And the Bible, we're going to have our bit of Bible reading now. And Eloise has been practicing very hard for this. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
I will be found by you, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Well, away the night round of applause there. Thank you very much. So, the question that we're thinking about this morning is how does God guide us? And I think it's really important through our lives, whether we are young or old, that we understand the way that God can guide us and that he, the way that he speaks to us. Because all of us have very big decisions to make in our lives, don't we? For some of us, it's about school, sometimes about work, sometimes about our holidays. Which holiday should I have? Where should I go? Anybody had a holiday recently? I need one. Okay, uh, it might be about how we spend our money, it might be where we live. Every day, we have decisions to make. And sometimes, we can make wrong decisions because we're not asking God for his wisdom and for his guidance. So this morning, we're going to think about the different ways that you might be able to hear God speaking to you every day. And we're going to look at different ways in the Bible. But before that, this is one of the verses that Eloise read. And if you can read it, I want you to read it with me. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God wants the best for each and every one of us, no matter how old we are. He knows the obstacles in front of us. He knows what's going to happen if we don't ask his guidance or we listen to his voice. So, different ways that God um, can speak to us. Obviously, we've already looked at Moses in the burning bush, so he might speak to us in the burning bush. Anybody ever seen a burning bush? No, so that's something to look out for then perhaps when you're on a walk somewhere. Uh, is God. And what do you say if you see a burning bush? You say, here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. So we try that. Here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. Mm. Okay, so another way uh, is in cloud and fire. When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, they went in the desert. They didn't know where they were going. So by night, uh, God guided them by a pillar of fire in the darkness. And by day, he led them by a pillar of cloud. So they always knew where they were going. And um, that's one way, that, uh, two ways that God guided in the Bible. So this is a young man called Samuel, who when he was sleeping, heard somebody talking. He was in the temple with his uh, mentor called Eli, and he kept waking Eli up and said, what, Eli, what, I can hear you speaking. He said, I'm not saying anything at all. I think God's speaking to you. So next time you hear the voice, you say, here I am, your servant is listening. Can we try that? And so it, Samuel, I think it was about nine years of age, ended up having a conversation with God in the middle of the night. And God went on to use Samuel in a wonderful way. He became one of the most amazing prophets uh, in the Old Testament. And he lived to a very long life serving God. All because when he was a young boy, he listened to God's voice and asked him what to do. So this is the Apostle Paul. Some of you may remember that uh, the Apostle Paul was on the road to Damascus. And a shining light uh, made him fall from his horse. And uh, the, the shining light was God. And he said, why are you persecuting my people? Because the Apostle Paul didn't like Christians. He wanted to put them in prison. And then he, God spoke to him in a vision with a big, big bright light. And then Saul became Paul, became a great missionary, and told everybody that Jesus loved him. But there was that blinding light when God spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus. Now this is the Apostle Peter. Now when Jesus went back to heaven, there was a big argument about who Jesus loved the most. Did he love the children of Israel? Did he love people who weren't? And so at the beginning, 
the disciples of Jesus only told the, their families and friends about Jesus. But um, Peter had a dream. It's about animals all being in the same, sort of the same blanket, if you like. And God was saying, everybody is special to me. Doesn't matter who you are, the good news is for you. And so Peter and the rest of the apostles started telling everybody that Jesus loved them. And of course, we've already heard mentioned on the whiteboard about the Bible that God speaks to us through the Bible. Now, how many of you, now I, I won't ask you to show your hand because that might be slightly embarrassing, but do you read your Bible every day? Yeah. <laughs> Is the right answer. I'm impressed. I'm not even going to ask, does he? But that's the answer. And really, we should be reading the Bible every day because we learn so much about God's plan for our lives. And one thing we mentioned earlier is to pray. And the thing is, when we pray, often we think that we just have to speak. We put our hands together, close our eyes, and we say, Dear God, help me this morning leading messy church. Whew. Amen. But what we do when we pray, we forget that we need to listen. So, so when we pray, we should be saying, um, Speak to me, God, your servant is listening. And I often say, we know why we have two ears and one mouth, don't we? You know why we have two ears and one mouth, Rita? Because we need to listen twice as much as we speak. Have you ever heard that one before? I need to learn that, I realise that. But when we pray, although we're praying to God, we need to be listening what he's saying to us. And then, the Bible tells us that before Jesus was born, God used to speak through prophets. But when Jesus was born, he was the only person who was going to tell us about God. And uh, Jesus said that his followers are like sheep. They know his voice. They listen out for him. And we read that verse together. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And that tells us that each one of us, if we trust in Jesus, are known to him. And we recognise his voice. And of course, somebody's already wrote on there, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit uh, to strengthen us to be his people. I remember when, um, in 1990, I always remember very particularly, in 1990, I first started to think that God was speaking to me about being a vicar. And I kept thinking, me? I've not been to university. I have a regional accent. That's a big thing for some people. Um, I'm not really qualified to be a vicar. And um, some people say, yeah, I don't think God's saying that to you. <laughs> some people encouraged me and some people didn't. But I had this voice speaking to me that says, I want you to put yourself forward to serve the church in full-time ministry. It, it took me seven years from when I first heard God speaking to me to when I became a minister. I had three years of interviews. I probably had 30 interviews in three years. And I did four years training, two years full-time, two years part-time. And then in 1997, 25 years ago this year, I was ordained. And that was, thank you, thank you, Phil, thank you. And this... That was me on my ordination day, uh, July 1997. I've not changed at all, have I? <laughs> I still young, look as young and as handsome as I... Anyway, won't go there. So, how does God guide us? Well, he guides us in all of those ways. But I think God speaks to us every day. In loads of ways. I think he speaks to us when we read a newspaper or a magazine. I think he speaks to us when we're watching the TV. 
I think he speaks to us through family and friends. I think he speaks to us through music. I think he shouts at us every day. But the problem is, we're not listening. We're not listening, so we need to be thinking about how God speaks to us. Now, a lot of people, millions of people around the world in the last week have been watching lots of services, haven't they, about the death of the Queen. There's been when she was lying in state, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury did some readings, and everywhere across the world there's been different services. And my hope is, particularly tomorrow for the Queen's funeral, that everybody who's watching billions around the world, they're going to hear prayers, they're going to listen to Bible readings, they're going to hear songs, and the Archbishop of Canterbury is going to preach. And my hope is that millions of people will hear God speaking to them through what's happening on the telly, and that they will be drawn closer to him. So, you we say this verse again? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay. I always give homework. Sometimes we give a, a worksheet. Sometimes we give a Bible. Some, there's lots of different things. The homework for all of you, young and old, today is really simple. All you need is a pen and a diary. Or a pen or a piece of paper. So your homework, when you get home over the coming weeks, is to keep a diary of the different ways that you feel God is speaking to you in the coming weeks. So have a bit of, wherever you are, if you think God is saying something to you, write it down. Tell somebody, tell me, tell somebody you know who's a Christian. Tell your mum and dad, or even mums and dads, tell your children what you think God is saying to you. It's been really exciting to hear some of those stories. But we're going to sing again. And uh, this is a, a very popular song for us. It's My Lighthouse. This is actually Catherine's choice. She's not listening, but it's actually Catherine's choice this morning. My Lighthouse, your choice. Oh, and Emma's choice as well. So I'm going to ask you to all stand. If you want to, the actions are on the screen. If you want to come and do them with me, that's great. My Lighthouse. Come up on your feet. In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go Questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness to show
Welcome. So, Catherine is going to come and tell us about the craft that you're doing this morning. So we always encourage families to do the craft together. Uh, there's something for everybody young and old. I don't want to say anybody sitting in here when we go into the hall to do craft. Catherine coordinates the craft every month. She's a very imaginative, inventive young lady. Where would we be without her? So I just want to say thank you to Catherine for what she does. So as Paul said, our crafts are in the hall um, as usual today and we've got five crafts. Um, if you don't have time to do everything as usual, um, you should have a little bag that you can take home and an instruction sheet. If you didn't get one when you came in, then um, there should still be some left on the table or um, um, maybe Maureen's floating around and has some, some left over. So you need your bag, your instruction sheet, and we'll also have the Messy Church team on hand to help you out with the craft. So everything linked to the theme of um, how God guides us this morning. Enjoy. Okay, so we give you 15 minutes to do as much or as little as you can. So stand up, ready, steady, go! It's our fifth anniversary 
It wouldn't be a, an anniversary without a cake. So we have a very special messy church cake. That Hannah, where's Hannah? Oh, wow. Hello, Hannah. Here, let's give Hannah a round of applause. And she only came back on holiday on Friday. I know, because I'm baking straight away. So, and lots of little cupcakes, so the cupcakes are for the children. Not now, but you'll get one when we finish. And, um, and, and I thought Catherine could be the one who's going to topple this cake over when she cuts it. Um, no, no, turn down so we can... Yeah. Are we going to sing happy anniversary to us? Yeah, Happy, birthday. Happy birthday to Messy Church. Do, 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 do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Messy Church. Happy birthday to you. Shout your praise, O oh King You give us joy nothing else can bring We'll give to you our offering And celebration praise Come on and celebrate Celebrate, celebrate and sing down for our prayers. We have different families every week uh, taking prayers and this week I think Anna and Thomas volunteered to lead our prayers. So remember when we pray we put our hands together, we close our eyes and we listen to the prayers. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for being there with us in everything we do and guiding our lives. We thank you that our Queen had faith in you and you helped guide her life. We pray for her and all of her family following her death. We pray for the new King Charles III as he starts his reign as our King. 
Please bless their family during her funeral tomorrow. Thank you for the start of the new school year. Please bless us in our groups, our preschools and our schools. Please look after our families. We pray for people we know who need your help or healing and we especially remember our friend John as he goes through his treatment. Please help us to always look to you for guidance, to pray, to listen, to ask for help in everything we do. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do the Lord's Prayer now, and you know the action to this, Anna, don't you? So Anna's going to stand here. I'm going to ask you to all stand. Um, sometimes you can't um, multitask and say the Lord's Prayer and do the action. So I'll read them. If you can do both, then that's absolutely fine. But let's follow the actions as uh, Anna does them. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anna, and stop asking for a round of applause, and Thomas. So, how does God guide us? If you've learned something new this morning about how God guides us, what I want you to do is to come and write it on the whiteboard so we have a few more things. As people are doing that, we're going to sing a hymn for us oldies. It's a bit of an oldie one. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Obviously, we had to sing that on a day like today, so... Let's stand as we sing. If you've got any more ideas about how God guides us, come and write them at the front as we sing this song.
When you came in this morning, I hope you picked up a copy of the church notices. Uh, if you didn't, please take one when you go. A few things happening over the next week or two, but especially tomorrow, uh, the state funeral of Her Majesty is taking place at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to start showing it live here from 10 o'clock. So if you'd rather be in church with other people rather than watching it at home with one or two, uh, come at 10 o'clock, bring something to share, some buns and bread and cheese, and we'll have lunch sometime maybe at half 12, one o'clock-ish together. We won't be watching it all the way through to Windsor, but we'll have a couple of hours watching the service and the preliminaries and all that. That's tomorrow from 10 o'clock. Um, always keep your eye open on social media, Twitter, Facebook, that sort of stuff. There's always new stuff being added uh, to the websites as well. And if you're interested on... Um, Tuesday, I'm speaking at the conference, sharing the stage with Sam Wells, who is the vicar of, um, where is he, um, St. Martin's in the Field in Trafalgar Square. How about that? So if you want to learn a bit more about church connecting with culture, more details on the notice board and the lobby. And of course, next week, we begin a new um, home group Bible study series on Bless. Hopefully, you've picked up the new diary that we had to change when we had the commemoration service uh, last Sunday for Her Majesty uh, the Queen. Keep James and Mark in your prayers, who are cycling across uh, America. I think the day 26 of 52 or 62 or something like that. Uh, more details on our website and theirs. We sang happy birthday at the Messy Church, but does anybody here have a birthday that's coming up that we've missed? Okay, we'll save it for next time then. And um, don't forget your homework to keep a diary of the different ways you feel God speaking to you in the coming weeks. Now, just one thing about Her Majesty. We have a book of condolence here. Um, that was at St. Mary's. It's now here. It's going to be here for the next couple of days. If you want to write something in there, then please do. Um, either before you go, when you come tomorrow. If you want to light a candle in memory of the Queen, uh, then please do that as well before you go. And I think that's all of the church news at the moment. Um, but our final song is always the same. We always begin Messy Church with the same song, I Know Jesus Loves Me, and we always end Messy Church with the blessing. And for some of us, this is one of our favourite songs that we sing. So we'll just stay seated for this and we sing along together. May your life in this world be a happy one May the sun be warm and may the skies be blue May each storm that comes your way clear the air for a brighter day May the saints and Savior watch over you May your life in this world be a happy one
song. So our final prayer this morning. So wherever you are, put our hands together, close our eyes and say what I say. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you guide us in so many different ways. We thank you that we can know Jesus in our hearts and lives. Help us to share the love of Jesus with others. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So can we say the words of the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. So, refreshments are being served. If you need to take your cake with you when you go, then do so. If you want to eat it in the hall with a nice cup of tea or coffee or juice, then please do that. Thank you for coming this morning. For our messy church families, it was a bit long today, but it's them adults, they're just so slow, aren't they? So slow in getting together. But I hope you've got a taste of what Messy Church is, why we enjoy it, why so many people keep coming month by month. So I'm going to put that picture on uh, the website, it'll be on social media, so you'll be able to have a closer look at some of the answers as to how God guides us. And I hope you've gone away today thinking differently about how God can guide you. And so our next Messy Church is on the 16th of October. Uh, I think Anna's leading this one. Is she? I think she's gone to a party, hasn't she? Is she going to be, why should we attend church? The answer's simple, because it's great. But we'll spend a bit more time thinking about that. So, oh, that's it. That's the end. Thanks for coming. Uh, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, we will. Amen. Amen. <coughs>